What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another beautiful day here in Dallas, Texas. I hope you guys are having a good day. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to actually turn on one of these trucks. Because there's a lot of stuff you gotta look for. You don't just turn it on and you're ready to go. It's a process, okay? So I'm gonna show you what you gotta do. So I'm inside the truck. I'm not gonna be moving it right now. I'm just show you how to turn it on. But if I was moving, I gotta put my seatbelt on. And uh, if I have a passenger, he has to put a seatbelt on. So first, we gotta turn the key. Okay, the truck has little clicks. It has to go through a little cycle. It has to go through. Okay, so those those little red dots, that's an indication that I have a low air pressure on both my primary and secondary tanks. So I gotta turn on the truck so it can, so they can build up. So right now I'm gonna turn on the truck. Okay, so we're, we'll let it build up for uh, for a few seconds, and I'll, we'll come back to it. All right, so you guys hear that? You don't hear the beeping anymore. That is because I have sufficient air on my primary and secondary tanks. Sufficient. It's not full. Full is all the way to 120. Sometimes it goes all the way to 150, depending on the truck. But that, you know, I have sufficient air. I can go out on the road with that. It's not beeping. It's not telling me I have low air pressure. We'll check the other gauges. My dead fluid is full. That's good. My trans temperature good i just turned on the truck so it's not all the way up my water temperature gauge is good so like i said i just turned on the truck so these gauges are not going to be all the way up yet my oil temperature gauge is good too <clears throat> my rpms obviously you know i i rev the truck and it moves so that's working my miles per hour so it's not moving right now because i'm not the truck is not moving it's stationary so that will move when the truck is, you know, on the road or whatever. My volts, I have sufficient volts. That's just telling me how many volts I have from the battery and everything else is working. That's what's telling me how many volts I have. My fuel, this is not my truck, this is not my route. So, you know, if it was my route, it should be full for the next day. So I can start the next day with a full tank. Okay, so now that I checked everything, everything is working properly. So now these knobs right here are my emergency parking valves. Okay, so I push them in so I can be able to drive the truck. So you push them in so you hear a little, you're gonna hear a little hissing sound. That's not an air leak, that's just different chambers filling up with air. Okay, so I press that one and I press this one. Okay, so you let, you let the, the system build up with air. Okay, so the hissing has stopped, so that means all the chambers are filled, all my brakes, everything is good, and you're ready to go on the road. That's a very simple um, way, you know, so you guys can know. It's a lot more to it, but that's just something you guys, uh, I wanted you guys to see, so you can know um, if you want to go into, you know, driving these trucks. It's not as hard as you think it is, but it is. You got to go through a checklist of stuff before you go on the road. You, wanna, you don't want to break down, especially in this heat, uh, 90, 100 degrees, and you don't have no AC, and you don't have this, you don't have no, you know, no cooling or nothing. So you got to check, you got to do a pre-trip of your whole truck before you go on, out on the road. So now you guys know what are some, some of the things you have to look for when driving these trucks. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.